Hi everybody, so this week we're going to be looking at drawing accurately and then we're going to look at layers so it's going to be two different videos, so two short videos so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, first of all we're going to look at the drawing accurately so these are some tips and tools that you might have actually used already without realizing it so I just have the AutoCAD interface here and I'm just going to open up a new drawing so click on our big A new and then click the AutoCAD ISO template okay so again you're probably some of you might be using different versions of AutoCAD I'm on AutoCAD 2018 so if you're using 2021 it's going to look slightly different hopefully I'll get my new laptop soon and I'll have AutoCAD 2021 but they're all there's not much real difference functional difference between them so don't worry about it and um, first thing we're going to do is that we're going to, when you've been drawing shapes the last couple of weeks you might have noticed that we've actually been able to use the object snap so this is basically when you've been drawing lines or you've been drawing lines onto other lines or onto other shapes the little these little green boxes might have shown up like so at the end of a line a little square box will show up or if you're on a circle the center of the circle will show up so these are what we call object snaps and they can be used to help us draw more accurately so um, we're going to draw this a few quick shapes just to show how it's working so just to get started now it doesn't matter about size and dimension so I'm just going to bring up the rectangle command and just click anywhere on your screen it doesn't matter what size it is just so it's roughly it looks that size on screen but dimensions don't really matter so we're going to draw one rectangle I'm going to click on a circle I'm going to draw a circle here so and yeah we'll go with these two just a rectangle and a circle to start with so again dimensions don't matter at the moment um, so what are we going to do so to access the options on the object snap you can look down here on the status bar so again this might look a bit different depending on what options you have so if you are ever are missing anything if you click on little three lines on the side here you'll see all our little options that you can add to the status bar along here um, but the object snaps are actually here so it's kind of you see our coordinates this is the model of paper space we'll cover that in, later on um, the first one is the spawn dis dis displaying drawing grid if you click that on and off you see that grid disappears on and off so I might just turn mine off to so make things a bit clearer um, this grid here this one here this is actually a snap mode so let's turn my grid on to show you a quick demonstration so this is snap to the grid so now just you have a quick follow here when I bring on the line command basically you'll see if you move your mouse if you look very closely you'll see it's actually kind of moving like in a kind of a step by step manner what that is actually because this is actually snapping to a grid so see we've actually got our grid along here but if you zoom in even more closer you can see it's actually snapping to all the different corners so as I said like this here so you can see that's the our mouse cursor it's snapping onto the grid so and when you zoom out you don't notice so much because the grid looks a bit further away and um, usually for my when I'm drawing I've don't really use the grid snap so we can turn it off and just, just you can know it's there if you want to I'll just turn off the grid itself as well so we can see what we're doing okay so the next thing we're going to look at is polar tracking so if you go along down the status bar you see this is like on here so it's a circle with a kind of angle on it so just click on this so you can see it says restrict cursor to specific angles it's currently turned off so let's click that to make it blue so that's it turned on I'm going to click on the little triangle beside it just to bring up the options so currently we have it set to 90 180 270 360 and then you can actually set it to different different angles depending on what way you want to draw so I'll just use the default one just click on this one all this does actually is help us draw lines at specific angles so you'll see now when I'm drawing up like this all this information is being shown so we can see the it says the polar and then it has our coordinates and it has the angle it is from the horizontal axis and if I go around like this you'll see it's kind of changes 128 going all the way up to 190 but down in the polar tracking option see we, we have it ticked that to the 90 180 270 360 that means whenever the angle reaches any one of these it's actually going to lock into place a little bit so you'll see now again I'll just draw straight across and you see when it's at exactly one of those angles so 0 90 180 that little dashed green line comes up it just means then we can actually, even if the mouse is kind of moving above, above and below a little bit, we can actually draw on that, draw at that angle. So it's a nice way to help us actually draw straight. And again, if you're going up, it'll actually draw the angle. We can, that little dashed line goes up, so we can draw the angle 90 degrees, then 180, 270, and then back to zero. 
and if you wanted to change them to the 45 degree 90 135 same thing again so we have our zero you rotate it you'll see actually our angle showing up there and then at 45 degree now then our dashed green line shows up so these are all these little things you can use you may want you may need to use them you may not use use them so again it depends what you're drawing and what you're doing but it's good to know it's there i'm just gonna leave that on there let's press escape now one of the things actually you might have noticed when we have brought up the line command so you'll see if this didn't show up in the previous one and um, this information so see actually on my cursor has specify first point and that has our coordinates system there and um, this is because it's actually showing our dynamic input i think on the first week or two we actually turned dynamic input off because it was messing up our when you're we drawing a line with coordinates so but mine's actually turned on so when you turned off you just have your mouse cursed like this and there's nothing here our polar tracking is actually still there um, but if we turn on our dynamic input it does actually show us a bit more information in real time so the information the commands actually usually come up on the command line down the bottom but with dynamic input on you can actually see the command line the prompt is actually showing up at the mouse cursor so again it's just a useful thing so it might help you speed up instead of looking down to the command line be able to see exactly what it is so if i click on this one it'll tell us basically what same as on the command line it says specify next point but you can see with the dynamic input it'll tell you that the next thing to do on the beside the mouse cursor so again it might be easier um, for, I usually keep them, I'll actually interchange, I kind of keep some, sometimes keep it on, sometimes keep it off. Depends what you want to do yourself. So maybe for this current exercise we're going to do for the rest of the semester, we can leave them on. So leave on polar tracking and dynamic input. It might just be useful to you. The next thing we're going to look at is the object snap. So again, I'll just bring up the line. So you may have noticed when you were drawing things over the last couple of weeks that when you bring the when you bring a, your mouse over to the end of a line, a little square shows up. And um, you might have even got like, if you're in the middle of a line, a midpoint goes up. So these little green things, these little green symbols, these are actually called our object snaps. It means we can actually draw a line onto these different points. The way we can actually control them is if beside the polar tracking cursor, uh, sorry, which one are we on? Here we are. So beside, we have our display grid, our snap mode here, and then a little, little drop down menu beside it. So that'll bring up our snap settings and you'll get a, a little window looking like this. So we have all these different options along here. I'm not going to go to everything now at the moment. So this is the snap and grid. So that was actually talking about the grid we were talking about at the start. So we can ignore that for the moment. Polar tracking is just there. So this is our object snap. So, so these are all the different things when we're actually going to draw. We can actually snap onto them. So it does make things nice. You can actually draw more accurately with these. So if you want to if you go on to the end of a line, if you didn't have this, object snap on you find it very hard to set a line with two lines exactly or if you wanted to go right onto the midpoint of a line using the object snap will just make it a lot easier so um you would think that you have if you had all these selected would make things a lot easier but you would be wrong because if you have all these turned on then things start to get very messy on your shape so you don't want everything on so i usually keep the end point midpoint center intersection extension is always good perpendicular and nearest they're the ones i usually use you may have to turn some of them on and off depending on what you're doing. So if you're working with lots of circles, you may need to use the node command or the node snap. Um, but I'll show you exactly what they are. So I won't go through them all, but again, you've, you've probably seen this in action before. So if we start a line up here at the end point of this rectangle, we want to draw it to the center point. You can see our, actually our polar tracking is going there, but we're just going to draw it to the center point of the rectangle and see that green triangle shows up because that's the center midpoint. That's the midpoint of the line in the rectangle. So we just click that there and then say if you want to draw a line to the center of the circle so if you just hover the mouse over the circle and then go back to where roughly the center is you'll see the center of the circle is, is highlighted in by the circular little green circle and you can lock on there and another one you can see if you want to go onto the edge of a circle or the edge of a line that isn't a midpoint or an end point and um, there's that option with the object snap called nearest it's kind of like this little green egg timer you can see along here so it'll actually snap onto the nearest point of where your mouse is. So that'll actually, it's just handy again, because sometimes it might, if you have, if you don't have the nearest one on and you're actually snapping onto a point that's near the midpoint, it'll actually, instead of snapping here, it might automatically go to the nearest object snap that you have turned on. So the nearest one is always a useful one to have. And um, I'll just press escape out of that one. Okay. And again, one other thing, I'll just show you again, if you go back into snap settings, There we go. So there is an option. This should be on by default. It's object snap tracking. Again, you've probably seen this, and but this is the explanation for what it is. So when you go to draw a line, 
say if you want to draw a line here, instead of actually clicking anything, you can actually snap, hold the mouse over the endpoint. And if you bring your mouse away, you see that little dashed green line shows up. This is kind of like a, a prompt line. It's almost like your, your construction lines you would have been using when you're hand drawing. Um, but this is the object tra sna track snapping. So when you snap onto it, when you hover over an object snap, and then just kind of move the mouse away, AutoCAD will actually trace a little kind of green temporary line. That's your object track snapping. Say if I wanted to align this point here and this point here. So the corner of the rectangles, hover the mouse over, don't click anything, just hover the mouse over the endpoint, slowly bring it up to about here, and then go on at the end point here, and say if you wanted to draw it perfectly horizontal, so you can go across here, and then you can see actually down at the top of the rectangle, the point was actually being highlighted, because AutoCAD knows then that because we, we just hovered the mouse over it, and we're now we're hovering the mouse over this, it, it can interpret the fact that we want to do this by intersecting the lines. So we move the lines across and it auto automatically will give us our target point where these two lines intersect. So then I can just click a line here. Now I'm actually drawing a line that is actually a direct in intersection point between going out from here and going out from here. So, and say if you want to do the same thing over here. So go down this length here. Instead of drawing, you could actually send this line to the exact dimension you need. Or if you just hover over the end of the rectangle, use your object tracking and you'll just see it, it snaps onto it there like that. So you just click it here hit escape and now we have a line so again it's a very 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 useful thing you're going to use especially in engineering lots of stuff we're going to do is going to be squares and lines and rectangles so if you have to line things up using the object track snapping is also very good so make sure you have at least endpoint midpoint center intersection extension perpendicular nearest and then the object snap tracking turned on and you should have plenty just have nice accurate drawings so that, that's a very quick run through some of the kind of the tools you need for drawing accurately. Um, next one we're going to look at is going to be layers. So that'll be another video. Um, but if you weren't sure about this one, just go watch the video again or ask any questions. You know how to get, find me. And otherwise, yes, I'll see you in the next video.